Welcome to Aylesford on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois, and daily Mass from the National Shrine of St. Therese of Lisieux. The shrine is a blessing from a very generous donation from the Margie and Robert E. Peterson Foundation. I know, I just realized that. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone, those of Carmelites here present, the small community of uh, St. Simon Stock. We want to welcome all of you out there who we are in communion with in the body of Christ as we celebrate this Eucharist. For the Lord has gathered us together to praise him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we gather before the Word of God this morning, let's just reflect on times and ways in which we make judgments about things that threaten us, that other people or institutions or groups are doing, for the times we don't trust God, and for the times we don't share our resources but tend to hoard what we, the gifts we've been given, and ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Holy God, you have created us in your image and likeness, and yet sometimes we don't look or act like you in terms of the way we treat our world, we treat one another, and look at ourselves. And we ask your forgiveness as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us unto life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, hope and light of the, of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to, to, to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and to ever extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, <clears throat> be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared, claiming to be someone important and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourself fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had him flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the, sa of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One thing I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I, I seek, seek to dwell, to dwell in, in the house, house of, of the Lord. Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge, of whom should I be afraid? One thing I, I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. 
One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John. Then Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. And so Jesus went up the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that the large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we find enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have just a little. Now one of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there's a boy here who has five lo- barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? And Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there, there was a great deal of grass in that place, and so the people reclined, about 5,000 in number. And then Jesus took the loaves, he gave thanks, and he distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. And when they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments over so that nothing will be wasted. And so they collected them and they filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. Now when the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew what they were going to come and carry him off and made him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, here in Darien, Illinois, it's at this national shrine, it's a gray overcast day. I went out this morning, I was drinking some coffee, and I was just struck by how it just felt gray. I wanted the sun to break through, and it didn't. But one of the signs was, as I was looking, feeling kind of feeling funny about all this, because I tend to like the sunshine, I went over, and one of the trees that I had been watching for a while that's near our office, uh, which a week ago looked dead, suddenly all these blossoms came out, and it just smiled. And I said, thank you. Somehow we have to trust that life is still there even amid dark times when we seem like we're wrestling with fog. In the reading from Acts, it's interesting as the church begins to uh, celebrate and and unpackage what it means that God raised Jesus to life. It's interesting, this part of the story, because the Jews were still both fascinated and threatened by these followers of Jesus who remain within the Jewish community. And you get a wise man, uh, Gamaliel. You know, I think our, our tradition or teaches that he was the teacher of Paul the great Paul of Tarsus, or Saul of Tarsus, that became Paul, who, who somehow broke Judaism out of its limited tribal kind of concept and spread it to the whole world and said, geez, that's where Jesus was going and that's where he is. But it's interesting, and you get that internal struggle that Judaism is still having with these new followers, these followers of Jesus as the Messiah, the, cho- the anointed of God. And so they're, they're threatened. You can see them. But Gamaliel says something very interesting. Why don't we just let them be, and maybe they'll perish on their own. And he uses examples of different ones over the years who 
red great movements excited people they died and disappeared and it all disappeared that somehow let's find out if this is truly God you know and that's the question what I think is interesting and I think we can all share this is sometimes the things that threaten us or touch our insecurities and touch our own moral authority about what we really believe those are the things we try to squelch we put them down by judgment or by distance by comments we just dismiss them and try to crush them because somehow they're threatening us instead of allowing God to move through us and I think we have to look at that there are people there's experiences that we get really uncomfortable with and there's people making comments and they're acting the way we act and and we ask the Lord to inspire us with patience and with wisdom and I think that's what Gamaliel was speaking to and that's what they the early Christians experienced there's some of them out there that are willing to give us a chance to wait and see and I think we have to do that before we destroy things with our own judgments and our own limits and blindness the John gospel repeats a story that is five times I believe in our our Christian scriptures it's the multiplication of loaves and fish and they all have a slight different twist but it's always the same story there's always an issue of a crowd they're following him because he's doing wonders and signs and then he looked hungry and then Jesus said okay he challenges the boys to figure to feed them you know he says well there's they're hungry get rid of them so we can have dinner and, the, and he, he said no no you feed them we don't have enough we only got 2,000 days wage, 200 days wages or and then Andrew comes up well there's a, just all we got here is a kid that we're gonna steal five loaves and two fish from you know and that's okay just tell them all to sit down and he does a, what we call Eucharistic blessing it's interesting why that even though it's Passover which is the time of freedom and we have developed our liturgy around the bread and wine kind of approach to the presence of God of Jesus is that the, the bread and fish is actually they're used more times you know in the early church and that was the great sign but he says go feed them so he, they start passing it out and there's he blesses it blesses God thanks him distributes it and I think there's a lot of ways God can truly multiply bread and wine or bread and fish in this case we all know that but it doesn't happen in most of our lives I think another way to interpret that reality is that these were not dumb people that were following Jesus that they had packed away their sandwiches their fried chicken or whatever they had you know or their vegetables or the hummus and as I think as he began to give it away give away what you got everybody else started sharing what they had I think the miracle is not so much that God can multiply bread and fish I think the miracle is that he can convince people to get over our hoarding instinct about our gifts and our fears and our insecurities that we hoard and they become the way we approach life so I think as we celebrate this Eucharist we remember what Jesus did empty yourselves and there'll be plenty for everybody for you and I'll, I'll be able to fill you but we tend to fill our hearts our minds our understanding our imagination with so much other things it's always a cloudy day and a lot of it is time because we cloud things because of our hoarding instincts sometimes and we, that, we don't have that big mindedness or our insecurities that want us to somehow aggressively stop out things people we think are wrong so I think as we go move on with Eucharist we ask for the Lord for the gift of patience and wisdom to know where God truly is in our life and to step over our own insecurities and our own things that threaten us and help us to privatize everything and hang on to it and hoard rather than be the generous self-giving self-emptying people that Jesus calls us to be Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, would listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world, and wherever people suffer from the violence, injustice, and historic misunderstanding of others, let us pray to the Lord. Let's gather together in our hearts and pray for those people who in any way need the healing power of the Lord Jesus, mentally, emotionally physically spiritually or relationally especially those suffering from the COVID-19 virus that is scaring all of us 
For the healing power of the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. I'd like to pray for all people who are in it, especially the members of the Society of Little Flower, and all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those people in those movements that somehow threaten us, that somehow we might allow God to reveal why and not make us violent in our reaction to squelch and judge and separate. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Let's pray for our leaders of our country and in all countries that somehow as they begin to try to help us break out of this cloister we're living in, that somehow they might do it wisely and precautions that the value of human life may become the primary value on which decisions are made. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for always listening to us. And we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the silence of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. And through the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer. Fruit of the earth and vine and work of human hands, they will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. <clears throat> o Lord, accept in compassion the offerings of your family, that under your protective care we may never lose what we have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all to laud you ever more gloriously as Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, rising, the life of all has been risen. And therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. <coughs> and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of your Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, to implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For we remember and give thanks that on the night that he was betrayed, that Jesus himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> <coughs> 
And we remember and give thanks that in that same way, that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, Lord, as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. And look, we pray upon this offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <coughs> and Lord, may the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Richard, our Apostolic Administrator, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to this family, this prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you today. In your compassion, O most merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For we join in the sacrifice of Jesus, because we know, we believe, and we proclaim that it is only through him, and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And inspired by divine teaching, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace, so that we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here. And grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The shalom of God be always with you. And let us offer each other some sign of that shalom. Lamb of God. And this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. O Lord, keep safe those for whom you have saved by your kindness, and that redeemed by the passion of your Son, we may always rejoice in his resurrection, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days of your life. Let's salute Mary, our sister in faith. Regina Celi, Laetare, Alleluia. Quia quem meru isti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. This, this Mass has ended. Let's go forth in peace and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. <laughs>